Bastards! Today I want to talk about food preparedness because you cannot live without food with the job obviously. A person can go three days without water and three weeks without food average. So very think of the next situations where hunger has been a huge problem. <clears throat> Throughout their history uh, many people starved because we cannot even imagine it. Imagine the the crop failures during the medi medieval period. Imagine the hunger during the world wars. We think about uh, political situations like in Ukraine during the Holomotor. I would advise to sh uh, search, search the information. Very cruel time, but it's always possible you can live through a uh, area that will suffer such a thing. Um, the Great Leap Forward uh, in China in the 50s were also devastating. Many millions of people starved. Um, World the World Wars. Every every uh, area that has been uh, into a war or a civil war uh, has uh, has been uh, uh, met with uh, starvation by groups or even even individuals. Uh, another problem is uh, financial. When you live in an area that is very dependent on uh, bringing food from far away, like big cities or uh, even even in just towns these days or suburbs, uh, food uh, in a supermarket it will only last three days when when the shipment or the next lorry doesn't arrive. So it's very important to keep a stash of food. Always, I would always recommend at least three weeks of food. That will sit out most disasters, but I'm thinking, uh, I personally love, like to think long term and also to help other people because you have family, friends, neighbors who are sometimes less or often even less prepared. If you have extra food, you don't have to send those people away when they try to ask for some help. So don't only prepare food for yourself, but also for your neighbor, your friends, the, your family, your partners, her family or something. It's very important uh, to keep extra. Um, if you make a pantry or a stock of food, always important. Uh, it's food that you're going to eat. A mistake that a lot of preppers make is they think, ah, uh, this food is uh, um, is cheap. I can buy it in large amounts. I will be safe. But uh, sometimes you just can't eat such food. You got to eat what you like to eat. There is a certain phenomenon called food fatigue. This will happen when uh, people have to eat the same thing day over, day in, day out. Their body will start to get uh, nausea, will create nausea after a while, even if you're starving, if you're hungry. This is a phenomenon that can happen. So keep a variance, keep some variance in your supply of food and things that you're going to eat. Next uh, mistake a lot of preppers make in their food preparedness is uh, they don't rotate their stock. They just let it let it sit there, and when the time is there, they will discover it's expired, or the cans have rusted, or some other problems that they cannot use the food anymore. So, keep rotating your stockpile. Very important. Um, the next thing is um, food uh, use. I prefer food that you can preserve for long time, for long term. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, like foods that that you can keep in stock. Like the, in this cellar, it's dry, it's cool, it's dark. It's the ideal place to keep to store my food. The food that I'm always um, will uh, advise to take is. Rice, simple, dry rice packed in a, a favorably 
in a vacuum plastic bag. Why? Uh, because rice is one of the best prepper foods in my personal opinion. When properly stored, like in a dry, cool, uh, dark environment, in a vacuum packet, you can store this for 35 years. Yes, even though the date on this package will say that it will be a few, uh, uh, only a few years, in this case 2023, which is over two years, but they have to put it on it because of uh, food regulations but when the, and for uh, legal uh, reasons, but a lot of foods will stay longer uh, good if you if you uh, look more information about it up. So I will uh, next uh, show you what food I keep in my preparedness and tell you uh, how long you can uh, usually store it under the right conditions. Let's put this away. All right, uh, we will start to go around. As you can see, these are my bags of rice. Uh, I, like I said, I like rice, so it's very cheap to buy in. Uh, at the moment, at least. It stays long for good, gives a lot of calories. And when people like neighbors, friends, family in need, you can give them a bag and they can also store it. Just in times of need. You can also barton with it for other gear when you have more food than you can eat. Uh, one 14.5 uh, kilogram of rice will feed uh, one person enough calories for one year. Keep that in mind. That is the that's why I like to keep rice. All right. Uh, next, water. Uh, you can um, you can use a water filter, but also keep some water in storage, like these plastic bottles. Um, the plastic bottles also have a date printed on them for a few years, but you can keep them as long stored as you actually can. As long no bacteria, no sunlight will reach it. You can keep, uh, like in this dark, cool, dry area, you can store them for very long. Uh, beware, after a decennia at least, you will start to face microplastic, which is not uh, uh, such a dangerous case in in survival, but if we're talking about long-term survival, it's just a factor to keep in account. So, uh, the next thing is... Um, these uh, are my... Uh, Ali, these are wooden frames with cans on it, if you can see. Ah. And I like to use these frames and store the cans in this, because why? I wrote on the top of every can the end date, so I can always see which are first going to expire. And um, so I can use that can first and rotate my stock in that way. Um, very important to rotate. it. Uh, I will also uh, write on the wooden frames what's inside of it. These are just beans, uh, some fruits in cans, uh, like oranges, oranges, uh, champi uh, champions, maize, um, ananas, uh, pineapple, and just some uh, desserts like uh, sauerkraut, some meat in, in can, uh, rice uh, cream, uh, and milk, uh, condensed milk. So that's what I keep as a tin, especially. Um, these are also some jars, cans, especially fish, uh, like sardines and mackerels. I don't know the English word. So um, you can store those even usually for around five years, the canned good. So keep rotating it. Um, it's more for the canned goods. I consider more for vitamins and other minerals. So that's a... Uh, and the fish, of course, for protein when meat is not around, a good replacement for that. And, and these are some, this is divided in a few things. Um, if you 
can see it. These uh, are my vegetable oils and other oils. Like um, I use two, two types because you can store them a long time. And even if they are, and they have more, they are multifunctional. What do I mean by that? The olive oil, I have here several tins and bottles of olive oil. You can use them uh, when fat is not around, like when you, you need fat, uh, when, and, uh, when you want to cook your food. It will give you a lot of energy. And even if the bottles expire, I can still use them, like I showed in the video about uh, light sources. As an improvised oil lamp. What's the next thing of oil? Uh, coconut oil. I like this. Why? You can cook with it and you can use it as a sunscreen for in the summer. So it is multifunctional. I have several uh, buckets, uh, jars with the stuff. And yeah, like you can see, my several jars of moonshine, powdered coffee. Uh, very important. Uh, these are all freeze dried, and I don't actually drink coffee, but like coffee junks, they will buy this shit anyway. So it's a good bartering item in my case. Uh, next important thing, honey. These are all real honey pots. Don't fool you. Don't get fooled by the store's honey. Uh, those are usually just. Uh, fructose syrup and not real, uh, uh, not mostly real honey. So I would always advise buy real honey. It's maybe more expensive, but honey you can it's forever. They even find Egyptian tombs with uh, with the mummies, and they found honey that is still edible after three thousand of years. So honey. Well, the gives energy, sugar, sugar, and it's antibiotic, so you can even use it as a ointment uh, over wounds uh, for diabetics. It's very healthy, so I would recommend honey. It's honey is like an investment; it never goes bad. Always, people people will always buy it. They buy it, so honey, I would recommend it. Uh, coconut powder uh, as substitute for milk. Um, these are, um, how do you say this in uh, English? Um, uh, couscous. Um, I don't know the, the English term for it, but couscous is also a very good uh, staple food. And above it, we have, uh, an, how do you say it? Uh, for porridge, to make porridge, some pasta, and... Um, that's on this side, the mostly of it. Next, ah, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but these are uh, boxes and buckets full of salt. Um, yeah, why salt? Salt you can use for to jar to um, preserve food. You can use it to preserve uh, meat, uh, for pickle to pickle food, um, for just for just the flavor. But salt, I would buy now. It's very cheap at the moment. Keep um, boxes of it if you can. Uh, you can also use uh, yodium salt for making bread. Uh, for it's more healthy. Um, pasta. And this is my. Ooh. These are my uh, emergency rations. Uh, you can store these things for forty years. They have all the nutrients. Uh, all the food groups that you need, le uh, lactose-free, GMO-free, vegan, for people who do care in the apocalypse. I don't know who will do that, but I always keep these around. The what's also handy about this is you can powder you can powder them, mix them in water, and give them to small children as a substitute for milk. You will not find in a difficult. Uh, uh, let's say shit hit the fan situation. You will not find easily um, baby food products. So I would rec that's why I like to keep them around because with one box I could uh, hike for four days in difficult terrain and I still could go on with it with just one of these boxes. These are each uh, nine bars of two thousand three hundred calories. So emergency rations are the 
worth their money. Uh, after that we have, I will not take this away, but this is all pasta. Dry pasta. Uh, why? Because you can store it for 15 years, if you can see it. This, even if the date says it's just uh, good for a few years, 15 years you can store this in the right conditions, like I told you, dry, dark, uh, cool. So, very cheap, good staple food, and good for calories. Um, if you can see. Next, this is just my boxes with random things like cocoa powder, uh, mostly my tea, and some uh, noodles and coffee, and some sugar. Um, I have different types of coffee, like the regular beans to keep store them longer tea my boxes um not bags of tea but full tea uh grounded tea and um, next um well this is my collection of booze why to infect wounds and to uh des to disinfect wounds and just because i like a drink sometimes i always keep alcohol uh higher are they drinks that are higher than 40 percent you can store them a very long time that's why i keep them here and um, below we have things like vinegar some homemade alcohol some powders like um, herbs and spices and that's the next thing we have just more rice like i said i like rice I find rice the best uh, part of a uh, food stock. And again, a whole box with uh, emergency rations like like these, but from another company. They last uh, less longer, but still about 20 years you can store them. I like them. And that's the food uh, preparedness in stockpile. So, back to sitting. So, after you have your pantry or your food stockpile, what's the next thing to do? Well, um, you can forage for food in your surroundings. Uh, you can go around the neighborhood and collect berries, wild, uh, wild, uh, how do you say that? Uh, nuts, and and herbs. You can to you can use to get more vitamins, minerals, and such things. Go around the neighborhood, uh, learn to recognize edible plants, learn to recognize uh, poisonous plants, very important. And next thing, you can hunt for for local animals. And yeah, it's very difficult to go outside and just hunt because even in difficult situations, they will consider that, um, what's the English term, poaching and you will get arrested probably so even if you want to do that a lot of people will hunt uh, and poach so there will not be a lot of wild game around what i is i would would do if i want some extra food uh, next to my stockpile uh, is to hunt for wild game in my backyard uh, you can like you feed you have a plank to feed birds you can throw some grain on it and some uh, sometimes a pigeon or a crow or some other animals they will eat from it and you can and uh, place it on a, such a place you can take a shot at it and then you can have you can have some wild game for dinner uh, always cook wild game very thoroughly for uh, like parasites or uh, worms and other nasty things that uh, diseases that could live inside of the the meat of wild game so cook it very thoroughly when you catch some um the next thing i will sh i will show if, I, if my editing skills are a little bit up to date which are not you will next see my other part of my food preparedness like my chickens my guinea pigs my gardening um if by the power of editing you will you'll see them now uh, keeping a garden is also a uh, important uh, a plot in your survival preparedness uh, for or self-sufficiency. 
So uh, you can do like I did, get some old wooden boxes uh, or or some uh, with a uh, reed to keep dirt in it and try to make your own, uh, grow your own crops, vegetables, fruits and take some time, look information up, ask people with experience. Uh, there are many ways you can, even on small uh, places, you can grow some food. Like this, you can see this is vertical um, gardening. I put uh, several boxes down in the middle above to save some space to get more efficiency from sunlight like you can see I keep my pots around here for just some small uh, vegetables because think uh, every meal you make your own is a meal you make you have to buy less and there you can see I got my rain uh, tons with rains and I got my uh, pots you can replace them, um, place them to get more efficiency for the sun. Um, don't forget uh, the compost, like over there. Uh, very important if you want a good harvest in next years. Uh, I unfortunately had not the good luck with my garden late years uh, since the corona. Why? Because of uh, my, o my work hours. Um, I have had not much time to make a, a work of the garden but I'm trying to learn trying to do it uh, soon I will work less and then I have time for my garden over there behind the fence those are my potato fields those were fucked up uh, as well because of Colorado beetles who ate my harvest and that's uh, the part I want to uh, tell you about uh, my preparedness in self-sufficiency and food so chickens I always would recommend to keep chickens in your backyard and um, like for the reasons you can think of uh, first of all eggs a brown of a uh, source of proteins very important for when schools uh, food is scarce scarce and you can breed your own chickens when you have a rooster like me uh, I always would recommend one rooster for at least three chickens. That's the good ratio. Uh, and they don't need a lot. Just give them some grain. Uh, pick some greens for them so they can sca uh, scaffold some. Give them some of their natural behavior. Uh, I don't like to give uh, them food in a, a box where they can eat from. I like to spread it so they can keep busy. You got to keep your animals somehow busy give them their natural urges so they can live uh, a better life than those uh, factory chickens you see um, on sometimes on the news so keep uh, good care of their animals and they will give you food uh, feathers for your arrows uh, plushy fe fe feathers for your pillows uh, meat eggs if you cannot keep chickens, like when you live in an apartment or a closed uh, area, I would recommend keep cor uh, I think the English name is uh, quartals. Um, those are like tiny, very tiny chickens-like creatures. They don't make a lot of noise, and they produce uh, small, smaller eggs. But you can keep them in inside of your house. Um, those. Uh, this is a part. Uh, uh, this is the second part of my uh, plan for self-sufficiency. So, um, keep in mind this idea. Uh, these are the guinea pigs. I keep them as a source of meat and fur. Uh, like, uh, like many people keep rabbits for the same reason. Uh, why do I use guinea pigs? Because for a few reasons. Because they breed easily, they only eat grass and green. Sometimes you got to give them some fruit, like or vegetables like carrots for some vitamin <laughs> C's. Um, and that's uh, and they are easy to keep. That's uh, the reason why. Um, but I 
recommend uh, for guinea pigs is take always always take good care of them. Um, give them fresh water, green, and give them good housing. Uh, if you're gonna breed with guinea pigs, I always would uh, recommend to to keep to uh, to keep two uh, pounds to keep them in, uh, so you don't get inbred, and that's very bad. In first, I had a few times of inbreed, and uh, those gave some troubles with some of the offspring. Um, so be very carefully about selecting the guinea pigs. And um, what I want also want to say is, um, why do I keep guinea pigs? Because uh, in South America they've been domesticated for six thousand years, so there must be something good about these creatures. What I also like, in contrary to rabbits, is these creatures don't jump high. I can keep, like you can see, a small uh, wall around it, and they cannot jump over it. Even if they want to. Um, so that's uh, the my meat source, the guinea pigs. I know it's uh, it will sound controversial, but because in the West we consider them pets, but in South America they are just like rabbits and chickens. Uh, like they keep them the farmers and regular people. So if you see this. The, that means the editor, the editing must have worked somehow by some miracle. So, this was my video about uh, food preparedness for your home, your bug-in situation. Um, I, I, it was a, it's, I glanced over the details, but we can go in deeper details about each subject in another video. This was just to give you an idea, some, some watch, some watching in to the whole uh, preparedness in food stockpile for your home. I hope you got some ideas from it, learned something from it. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video.